Pro wrestlers have to think very carefully about the inevitable repercussions that come from accepting a piece of advice from another individual. Listen to the right piece of sage wisdom from the right person and your career could be set to take off. Yeah, and if you open up your ears to an unqualified muppet, you could be in some trouble. However, deciding who to trust and who to ignore can be a daily challenge for men and women across WWE, AEW, and indeed throughout every other company in history. Every single wrestler here chose to in fact dismiss the advice they were given. A few eventually gave in and followed it, but not without a fight. And most just full-blown disregarded it altogether throughout their entire careers. Oh, and believe me when I tell you that some of these suggestions are ones you won't actually believe came out of another human being's mouth. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 times wrestlers ignored all advice. Number 10, Kofi Kingston. Superstar Billy Graham has kicked up a bit of a stink more than once via his Facebook page by heavily criticizing WWE, Vince McMahon, and a few others. When Kofi Kingston won the WWE title at WrestleMania 35, Graham changed tact and suggested something that was a, a, a bit different. He urged the new champ to add 50 pounds of salt solid muscle to his frame by taking copious amounts of anabolic steroids. The former champion then followed that up by saying Vince won't care and that the WWE chief would actually be quite pleased with the muscular transformation. Kingston obviously ignored this advice and kept doing what brought him to the dance in the first place. There might have been a, a tongue-in-cheek tone to Graham's post, but it was still a bit ridiculous for him to advocate heavy steroid use in 2019. At the end of the day, Kofi still managed a lengthy reign without juicing up until he was fit to burst. Number 9, Owen Hart. Th this one's a pretty famous one. As he prowled the hallways of New Jersey's Continental Airlines Arena at SummerSlam 1997, Steve Austin worried about one bump that Owen Hart had in mind for their match. Hart wanted to perform a sit-down tombstone pile driver on Austin. But his dance partner was rightly concerned about how dangerous it was. Austin asked Owen not to sit down on his ass for the move, and instead preferred that he either drop to his knees like The Undertaker or remove the spot altogether. For some reason, despite being a true pro for 99.9% .9 of his working life, Hart rebuffed Austin's request and did what he wanted anyway. The end result was a broken neck and temporary paralysis for old Steve. Although he'd recover from the injury, Austin had to switch up his ring style and work with limitations for the remainder of his career. The ill effects of that solitary bump, one that he asked not to take, would be felt by the superstar and the company forever. Number 8, Mr. Kennedy. Generally, wrestlers in WWE tend to listen to The Undertaker when he speaks, and they rarely go against the locker room leader his advice. In 2007, the ever-wise Mr. Kennedy did exactly that. He'd been pulled aside by the legend and warned that some over on Raw might think that he was being arrogant or cowardly by covering up on strikes during his matches. Kennedy, explaining why he did it, reasoned that covering up on punches, chops, and other blows was more realistic than leaving oneself open to further punishment. Taker didn't disagree and actually told the brand-jumping SmackDown man he was absolutely right but did say that some on Raw wouldn't like it. When Kennedy eventually moved over to Raw, he told Steve Austin's podcast that he didn't change a thing. Later, he realized that a few heavy hitters on the brand thought he was difficult to work with, or in fact, crapping all over their strikes. The Undertaker's fears had been correct, and Kennedy was considered a hard shift inside of the ring. But it's fine, because it all worked out really well for him in the end. Number seven, Rob Van Dam. Here's another one from the Steve Austin Show archives. When Rob Van Dam joined the WWF from ECW, he stuck with the hardcore frantic style that had worked for him in the Land of Extreme. That included taking hard steel chair shots to the face and head without putting his hands up for protection. After a few months of watching him work, Vince McMahon finally stepped in. RBD said he blew off Vince's advice at first by saying, it's cool, that's what everyone else does. McMahon wasn't having any of it, and he repeated that Rob should put his hands up to cushion the blow because that was now company policy. After another rebuff from Van Damme, Vince shouted, Now listen, I'm your father, I'm telling you to put your hands up! Sorry, Dad? 
The ECW incomer's stubborn nature meant he rejected the demand for another while longer. Like a dog with a bone, Vince wouldn't relent and kept on at Rob to protect himself. Eventually, RVD decided he should probably do as he was told because McMahon was the one paying his salary and because concussions aren't actually all that fun. Number six, Cody Rhodes. On a recent episode of AEW Dynamite, Cody Rhodes performed a stunning moonsault from atop the steel cage onto Wardlow that popped the house and got people online talking. It was a stunt Cody debated back and forth in his own head all day. And he also had to battle others who didn't think it was a good idea. Tony Khan, mainly. The AEW figurehead tried to talk Rhodes out of using the move at all, and questioned whether or not the match even needed it. Cody told Sports Illustrated that Khan was adamant he remove the moonsault from the match layout, and do something else instead. His concern, and that of others, was why Rhodes locked himself away before the match. Come crunch time, he scaled the cage and leapt off backwards onto Wardlow. The spectacular bump injured Cody and was one of the most risky things AEW has booked thus far. And it wouldn't have happened had Khan been able to literally talk Cody off of the steel ledge. Number five, Hulk Hogan. In a 2015 interview with the Orlando Business Journal, Hulk Hogan shared the single worst piece of advice he's ever been given in the wrestling business. Amazingly, it happened in Japan during the late 1970s. Someone over there told Hulk that real wrestlers don't wear knee pads. What? This ludicrous example of senseless machismo was popular at the time, according to Hogan. Wrestlers who did choose to protect their knees were considered weak for doing so, and it was apparently deemed much better to suffer joint pain in later life from excessive bumps. Genius. For people who exist in a worked industry, some pro wrestlers don't half talk a load of crap. To his credit, Hulk rubber-eared this nonsense statement and made the pads a part of his marketable look for decades. It's almost impossible to picture classic Hulkamania era Hogan without those red knee pads sandwiched between yellow trunks and boots. Number four, Steve Austin. After years of up and down mid-card experiences with the company, Steve Austin confined in manager Robert Parker that he'd soon be leaving WCW in 1994. Parker was shocked and admitted to Wrestling Epicenter that he advised his friend not to give up a contract worth hundreds hundreds of thousands of dollars, or to burn his bridges with Eric Bischoff. The old timer recommended that Austin finish up the remainder of his contract. Steve was obviously having none of it. Regardless, he'd end up being fired by Bischoff via FedEx whilst recuperating from an injury. In other words, Austin didn't quite get to negotiate his own release from the promotion, and he was the one who felt Bischoff burnt bridges with him not the other way around. He was gonna ignore Parker's advice anyway. Austin told his pal that he was seriously unhappy in WCW and needed to get the hell out of there before he went mad. Obviously things worked out quite well for the future Stone Cold in the long run, so this piece of wisdom dodging proved to be the right call for the rattlesnake. Number three, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar would have been dead as an investment had he listened to some WWE producers right before he debuted on the main roster in 2002. According to Paul Heyman during a live Q&A session, those producers told Brock that he needed to be a Russian character who stood in the ring and didn't sell anything. Taz, who was watching from ringside, was horrified and offered to ask Heyman what he thought about their suggestions. Predictably, the former ECW head was equally as turned off by their gimmicky bullcrap and told Brock he'd be done in six months if he followed their advice. Lesnar said he didn't plan to anyway. That set the ball rolling on Paul's involvement in Lesnar as a project. He offered to produce Brock's matches, was granted permission by Vince McMahon, and went about the task of properly shining up an already incredible athlete. No Russian gimmick, no slow methodical movement, and no career ruination. Just one credible beast. Number two, Mick Foley. The commentary call Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler made when Mick Foley came hurtling towards the announce table of Hell in a Cell at King of the Ring 1998 will live on forever. Lines like, with God as my witness, he's broken in half and that's it, he's dead, are timeless. But Bruce Pritchard wanted to stop the drama right there. Via his Something to Wrestle With podcast, Pritchard said that he couldn't believe it when Foley told him he wanted to go on top of the cage twice in the same match. Keep in mind that this had never ever been done before and you might begin to understand why the producer was left, well, totally baffled. Bruce thought going back up top would spoil the lasting image of the first bump. He believed that the original announced desk fall should be the finish. 
Not the beginning. Mick couldn't care less what anybody else thought because he was determined to make the match memorable and you know what? He did just that. Number one, Degeneration X. In late 1997, Shawn Michaels and Triple H's Degeneration X faction began pushing the envelope on WWF television. This raised the ire of the USA Network, and Vince McMahon asked the group to tone down their behavior lest the company get into even more trouble. Screw that, said DX. They ingeniously decided to use USA's own frosty responses as part of promos. That's where the iconic State of the Union skit came from. Michaels and Hunter used direct lines from the network's angry correspondence towards McMahon. Instead of heeding the warnings, they blended them in as part of their act. The X weren't interested in stopping their riotous shenanigans just to appease the corporate suits who thought they were going too far. Somehow, in the face of immense tension with Vince, the lads found a way to keep doing what they were doing pop big ratings, and mollify the USA Network by giving them even bigger numbers. And that's our list. Know any other times when wrestlers ignored all advice? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down there. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're at it. Also, why not head on over to whatculture.com and click on some more awesome articles just like this bad boy. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. I'm sure I'll see you soon, but look after yourself until I do.